afternoon everyone how has your week been i hope it has been great we thank god it's wednesday another opportunity for us to learn more about leadership it is the lord that has done this and we are so glad for it we bless god let's pray our father in heaven we bless your name for today we thank you because you are with us you have begun this week with us you have helped us thus far the things that we have witnessed in our leadership in our in our works now in, in everything we've committed our hands on over the last few days, you have shown yourself strong and mighty. We thank you because it, the result that we have gotten hasn't been because of our ingenuity, but it has been because you have been with us. Lord, we ask that you continue to help us, O oh Lord, and you continue to enlarge our coast. We, you continue to take us to new territories, to new paths. You, have, you continue to define the path before us, and you continue to lead us in the way that we must go. Please continue to glorify yourself in our lives. Continue to help us as leaders and continue to use us for your glory on the head. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Buiga Didiji. I'm so glad to welcome you to the, this week's edition of Leader View. God bless you. Last week, the Lord helped us and today is going to help us again. We'll be looking at the indispensability of correct vision in leadership. Now, if you note that we use the word correct, we are not saying vision on its own is not fantastic. But we are saying, even though vision is great, it needs to be a correct vision. You see, as much as anything can have uh, a good part, there could also be a part that is not too good, a, a part that has been uh, adulterated, a part that has been... Um, diluted a part that is not the way it was originally built for instance it's one thing for you to buy a car it's another thing for you to buy a used car if you use a if you buy a fairly used car you're going to become a car owner if you buy a brand new car you're going to become a, a, a car owner but you know that the two are not the same now vision just like the car it could be correct it could be incorrect as much as we appreciate the fact that leadership must be driven by vision, we have come to realize that a vision is not enough. It must be a correct vision. So today we want to look at how indispensable a correct vision is to your leadership and to my own leadership. And as we have begun already in the book of Genesis, we will continue in this series, the leadership trip to Genesis, as we see from the from the book of Genesis, especially Genesis chapter 3, how, in this, how indispensable correct vision is. It is not enough to see. You must see well. You must see correctly. Let's quickly go to Genesis chapter 3, and I'll start the reading from here from verse 1. Genesis chapter 3. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the feet, which the Lord God has made, and he said to the woman, As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. As God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now if you look at the word, now we know that this person that the serpent was talking to was a leader. She was a pioneering leader. In fact, Adam called her Eve. For she is the mother of all. Now let me even see where it is written. Okay, it is uh, subsequently in that chapter 3, that's where it is written, where uh, in chapter 20, I mean chapter 3 verse 20, Adam called his wife named Eve because she was the mother of all living. Now, being the mother of all living means she was a leader over all. She was a woman, a vessel through whom others will come out from, through whom others will be released. She was to become a releaser or a developer, a, a producer of great people, of great nations. So she was a leader the same way her husband was a leader. Now these were leaders under the leadership of God. God who was the sovereign leader over the whole universe delegated a portion of that leadership responsibility to this couple. Now, the wife was confronted by uh, the serpent and said, As God indeed, God who gave you this leadership responsibility, as he indeed said, 
as he indeed said. Now, one of the things that we must note is that for these couples, for these people, uh, Adam and his wife, the words that they had from God were not mere opinions from God. They were not one of the sayings of others. They were, as it were, instructions that predict their future, that shows their future, that determines their hand, that creates their hand. It was more or, less, more or less like a vision statement from the Lord to them. Eat this. Enjoy this. Don't do this. You will get this. This is what you should do. That was the vision that God committed to them. God gave them a clear vision. Now, it got to a point at this moment, the serpent asked the woman, as God indeed said. If you know that word, as God indeed, he didn't say, as God said. He said, indeed, trying to second guess God. Now, in your leadership, among other things, it's important for you to watch out for those who second guess the instructions that you give and the instructions that you yourself have, has been given. Those who second guess it, they create in you a tendency to question what has been committed into your hands. You've been created, you've been enlisted, you've been hired, you've been employed to run a race. And so somebody comes to make you second guess the essence of that race. And so you begin to develop a kind of attitude against what you have committed yourself originally to. And so you must watch out for those who make you to second guess the vision that you are running with. You see, you cannot run with two things at the same time. Now, when you are running with something and somebody is making you to second guess what you are running with, then they are in a way trying to prevent you from running at all. I remember the scripture in Habakkuk, Habakkuk where I think Habakkuk chapter 2, the man of God said, I will set myself on the watch. Uh, I want to see what God would, uh, would, um, would say when I'm being uh, questioned by God. And God said, write the vision. Write the vision. Let it be plain on the tablet that he may run, he that reads it. Now, the vision that has been written, don't forget, God didn't say create a vision. God didn't say, um, come up with a vision. He said, write it. The, let's even go there because it's very important for us as we look at the indispensability of correct vision in leadership. Habakkuk, Habakkuk chapter, let me quickly get there. Okay, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 uh, to verse 2. He says, I will stand, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 2. He says, and I, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered and said, write the vision. Don't forget, he said, I will watch to see what he will say to me. So we must understand that the vision that he was expected to write was not to be written from his head. It was to become a product or it was to be as he saw. So when he sees a thing, he writes it. Write the vision. Now he says, make it plain on the tablet that he may run. Who reads it? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Don't change it, wait for it. Don't change it, persevere in it. Don't utter it, work for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Write the vision. Make it plain on the tablet that you may run, you will raise it. Now, the man, the woman who comes to you to make you doubt, to second guess, a vision that has been so delivered to you is a man that is trying to stop you from running. <laughs> Bible says, write the vision, make it plain on the tablet that he may run. He who reads it, even if it's you that reads it, you will run with it. So a man who wants to stop you from running towards a goal would not ordinarily stand in front of you as a form of barricade or an obstruction. No, that would be foolish of them. Most people don't do that. What they do is to, is to make you second guess the vision that you are running with. So watch those who make you to second guess 
the vision that you are running with as a leader. So let's continue. And he said to the woman, As God in this said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the tree, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which in the, is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, if you are familiar with the instruction that God gave to Adam in the book of Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 16 to verse 17, God said, of all the trees of the garden you can eat, you are free to eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. Now, the woman, when she wanted to respond to the serpent, said, we are not even expected to touch it. If you look at it, God said, don't eat it. She said, we are not even to touch it. Now, it looks so close, but there is a twisting of some sort. And so you must also watch out for those who twist the vision. The vision is to be received. It's not to be twisted. Beware of those who twist it. It's very important. Don't forget, in this space, I mean, uh, correct vision is not a matter that you can say, okay, I may have. I may not. I may have today. I may not have tomorrow. It is something that is necessary if you must at all run, if you must run, if you must move, if you must progress in your leadership. You must have vision that is driving you. All right. I want us to read something. Okay, let's continue for that. There's something I want us to note from verse 4. It says, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave of she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Verse 7. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sealed fig leaves together, and made themselves covering. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. One of the things that I have realized is that, among other things, wrong vision, warped vision, twisted vision as a way of creating in you fear. The Bible says that the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. Now come to think of it. A man who has the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and of sound mind, is he not a man who is able to do great things? He's able to do so much. But a man who has the spirit of fear is in that, is limited. So the only thing he could do is to hide away from responsibility. Hide away from the purpose of God for his life or her life. So you must know that if you are afraid, you are, you are just worried. You are overly worried. Then it's a pointer to the fact that you could be a man, a woman with a wrong vision or a warped vision, a twisted vision. We are not saying you don't have vision. By the way, you may not even be able to do anything without a vision. The fact that you've been able to do one or two things shows you have vision. The question we are being asked today and we are asking also is, what kind of vision are you running with? Is it a correct vision or an incorrect vision? Is it a clear vision or, or unclear vision? Now, because Adam had vision that was twisted, that was warped, that was made wrong, he became fearful, and so he only had to run. 
a way not to run with the vision. You see, you are either running with the vision or you are running away from the vision. The question is, what are you doing now? Are you running with the vision? Are you running with the vision, not just a vision, or are you running away from the vision? The word of God to you is to question you now and say, young man, young woman, what are you doing? What are you doing? See what God asked Adam in verse 9. Genesis chapter 3 verse 9, God said, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Young man, where are you? The things you've been busy with lately, where are you? <laughs> are you running away from the vision? Or are you running with the vision? It's a question you and I must answer. One of the things I've also realized is that until you find a correct vision, until you are able to see well, you are not able to do well. You are not able to speak well, and you are not able to think well. Let's quickly go to Gen um, Jeremiah chapter 1. There is something for us to see from the life of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. It's a familiar scripture for most of us. Jeremiah chapter 1, and I will read verse 11 to verse 12. The Bible says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. You have seen me well. So, because you have seen well, you have the capacity to do well. So, a man who has not seen well cannot do well. Sometimes, as a nation, we are looking for men that can, you know, there's one word that has been used so much in Nigeria, for instance, but it has lacked so much impact on the lives of men, and they call it political will. Now, it is not enough for you to vote somebody in because he looks tall, he looks handsome. The question you should ask is, does he have the political will to create the change that you desire? Does he have the will? Does he have the will to create the change? Now, that will is usually sourced in vision. When you see well, you do well. It is not, a, you are not pushed to do things. People don't threaten you to sign bills or to, 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 to push for, the, for some bills or to create jobs. People don't threaten you because you have vision. You, you have seen something and so you are able to do great things. You are able to see well. But we usually go for men who tell us things we want to hear, not men who tell us things that we must hear. Places we must be, the persons we must become, the people we must become. It is important that we understand that the fuel of leadership is not ambition. The fuel of effective leadership is not ambition, is not greed. The fuel of effective leadership is not even hard work. It is correct vision. If you see well, you will do well. What drives people, what drives effective leaders is no greed. It is correct vision. Don't forget, it says, write the vision. Let it be plain. That it may run, he who reads it. So when people see well, they do well. So the question we must answer is also written in Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. And I want us to read it quickly. Genesis chapter 3, verse 11. Verse 10, the man said he heard the voice of the Lord and he was afraid, so he hid himself. Let's see verse 11. And he said, God said, who told you that you were naked? You have come to believe you are naked. You have come to accept that you are naked. And you have even begun to run with the impression of your nakedness. And so, you know, when people are naked, they, want, they run away to hide. They run away to cover up. So they begin, they, they begin to do different things. And so you ask them, what is the basis of this? Why is this man doing what he's doing lately? Because he has a new vision. But the question is, where did he get that vision from? Who is the source of his vision? That was the question God asked him. So it's important that we know that your vision is as original to the degree of the originality of the source of it. 
So if your source is fake, what you are running with would be fake. And you mustn't forget that vision is received. Vision is not created. Many people use the word they have created vision. You are not to create vision. You receive it. For instance, if you see something, do you create what you've seen? You've seen. You've, you don't need to create it. What you need to do is to document what you've seen, to capture it. Visions could be caught. Visions could be captured. Visions could be, uh, if I want to use the word snapped, but it is not to be created. Now, for instance, you are looking at me now. Do you create what you see? No. But what you are seeing, you can capture it with your eyes. You can even record it. You can download it. That's what vision is. Visions can be downloaded. They are not to be written. Let's see something in verse 12. Then the man said, now see verse 11, let's conclude verse 11, it says, And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. She gave me and I ate. You gave me an original vision. But the woman you gave to me came to her tight. She gave me a new one and I accepted Vision is not to be replaced. Vision is not to be altered. Vision is not to be adulterated or to be manipulated, to be twisted. Vision is to be written and vision is to be run with. So when you receive vision, capture it, document it, cherish it, run with it. Don't change it. Don't replace it. Don't allow anybody to change it for you. Don't allow it. Let's see verse 17 quickly because of our time. Now, because as soon as the, the man said, it was the woman that gave it to me. God said, ah, woman, why did you do such a thing? The woman said, no, I didn't do it deliberately. It was the serpent that deceived me and I hate. And God looked at the serpent and cursed serpent and gave the serpent the worst judgment that you could ever imagine. And then God looked at the woman, because you have done this, you have allowed this serpent to deceive you, to twist the vision that I gave to you and your husband. Because you have done this, this is your punishment. And then God looked at the man. See what God said to the man in verse 17. Then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, note that word, because you have allowed your wife to change the vision I gave to you, because you have allowed your wife to upgrade, update, review, and cancel, replace the vision I gave to you. See your life. And you have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of. Cost is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Now, the question is, when God created man, did God anticipate, did God create man so that he would toil all the days of his life? Now, if you think the answer is no, I am with you. Now, since God didn't originally intend that man would toil all the days of his life, it therefore means that the vision of man was the basis for the security of the, of the destiny of man. And so, because the vision of that man was twisted, because the vision was replaced with the wrong vision, his destiny was therefore changed. So I have come to discover that what changes the destinies of people across the nations of the earth isn't what many people think. Among other things, I'm sure we know that in Nigeria, for instance, when somebody's destiny is changed, people will say, oh, the witches and the wizard must have been, must have been responsible for what has happened. Or somebody could say, oh, it's bad luck. Hmm. Or... Somebody is just lucky or is not lucky. Now I've come to realize it is not witches. It is not the activity of the witches, the wizard. It is not luck or lack of it that changes the destinies of people. It is the vision that people run with. Your vision, the right vision, when you run with it will lead you to an end. When you change that vision, then you have a different thing you are running with. It will take you to a different end. For Adam, he had an end based on the vision that was committed into his hands. 
And so because the vision was twisted, was what was adjusted, was manipulated, it then had a, a destiny that was no more the original destiny, but a twisted one. In sweat, in the sweat of your feet. Okay, let's read verse 18. Both us, okay, in uh, let me conclude that verse 17 again. Cost is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both tongues and tissues it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat of the herb of the feet. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are and to dust you shall return. The destiny of this man was changed. Because he had a wrong vision. Because he received, he allowed others to change the vision that he was originally given by God. Your God-given vision is not to be adjusted by any man. It's not to be revealed by any man. No man must pity you and then change your vision. No man must love you to a point that they change the vision you run with. Because if they change your vision, they change your destiny. If you allow any man to adjust your vision, you have allowed the man, the woman, to adjust your destiny. If you must end well, you must run well. If you must run well, you must have the right vision. That's what has been laid in my spirit for you, and it's also a word for me. I must always remember that vision must be received. Re vision is not to be adjusted, it's not to be manipulated, it's not to be thrown to public opinion. It is to be received and to be run with. God has given you vision so that you can run with and so that you can get to a predetermined end. When you adjust the vision, you adjust your head. So don't, don't blame God for who you are becoming suddenly. Uh, consider what has been the guiding principle for your life. What you've been seeing. What do you see? Have you been seeing yourself naked? Or have you been seeing yourself complete in the Lord? Have you been seeing yourself a vessel that the Lord trusts with the mandate for nations? Or have you been seeing yourself as somebody that is not capable? You are not handsome enough. You are not, you are not beautiful enough. You are too tall. You are too short. You are too fair. You are too dark. Have you been seeing yourself wrongly or have you been seeing yourself well? How you will do and how you will think and how you will speak, it will be a premise on how you see. It's important that you begin to see well from today so that you can think well, so that you can speak well, and so that you can do well. And God will bless you. Leadership is critical for every one of us. We need leaders to see well. Both at the local and at the state and at the federal level, at the global level, we need leaders to see well. What will become of us as a people is not a matter to be given to chance. It must be as we are seen. As you are seen, God said you will hasten to fulfill it. What I've heard you say, my yes, I will do. The things you have seen, you've heard from God, they are the things that God has committed himself to do in your life. When you deviate from the, the words of God for you, then you are deviating from the original plan of God, and therefore you are not able to enjoy what God has for you. The Bible says, eyes have not seen it, yes, have not heard it. Neither has he entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for them that love him. So because you love God, you run with the vision that he has committed to you. What will become of you has never been seen, neither has, has it ever been heard by anybody. It's completely new. It's a new thing. God is doing a new thing in your life. God is doing a new thing in your leadership. Your family is becoming a new people, a new family, a new after the order of the plan and the, and the counsel of God. It's important that you remain true to that vision. You remain true the, to God. Let your life be as the Lord has designed it. As the Lord has shown you as you have written it. Don't change it. Don't make it. Don't adjust it. Don't let it suit the current trends in the environment. Don't review it in a way that it will blend. Don't let it blend. Don't let it be something that just mixes with the crowd. If your vision is mixed with the vision of the crowd, then you become like the crowd. Your destiny ends up where the crowd is going to. It's important you understand that. That's leadership. You, do not, you are not expected to be afraid to go all alone as long as you are running with the vision that has been given to you. Don't be afraid. Vision does not produce fear. It is 
It is wrong vision, twisted vision that produces fear. God bless you. My name is Boye Gadideji and you have been listening to, uh, you've been watching Leader View. It's hosts every Wednesday. God bless you.